As we speak, bike parks in many parts of the world are reopening. Here are our tips on how to set up your bike for just the occasion. In recent years, bike parks have crept up all over the place, but they're still not everywhere. It's very possible to be a very experienced rider having never ridden in one. Well, here are my tips to set up your bike for the bike park. It's not too uncommon on cross country bikes or light trail bikes to have brake rotors as small as 160 millimeters. In my experience, brake rotor size is the biggest difference you can make to braking power. So with the correct adapters and adequate frame clearance, you can run downhill size 200 mm rotors front and back. Honestly, the difference is huge and it will keep you feeling safe and secure whilst on the trails. If you're going to be riding lift access trails and have little to no intention of pedaling, then why not treat yourself to some slightly heavier but far grippier downhill tyres. They'll be more stable, slightly slower rolling, but far more supportive over rough terrain and in high load turns. As your skills progress and you'll start hitting turns harder, you can sometimes feel like you're about to roll the tyre off of the rim itself. Now, irrespective of any puncture prevention or rim protection, having an insert in the back can really make the bike feel a hell of a lot more stable, especially in those G-out turns. If you're using an uplift, especially a pickup truck, it's worth thinking about how that uplift might potentially damage your frame. Now on the tailgate of a pickup truck, the down tube can sometimes be bouncing on it. So having a tire cut off, running the full length of your down tube, not only protects it from rock strikes, but any potential damage from the tailgate of the trailer. Single ring setups are everywhere now. Well, almost. I consider them to be better in terms of chain retention than doubles or triples, but sometimes they need a helping hand. A chain device, either top, bottom or both, can stop your chain working away whilst you're riding rocky descents. If your bike sounds like the cutlery drawer in a caravan, it can be very well worth using some rubber mastic tape. Now you can use this all over the bike, but particularly around the drivetrain to stop that metal on metal contact. A quiet bike is not only nicer to ride, but it will help you detect other problems should they arise and start making a racket. There's an old adage that having a higher saddle enables you to steer and maneuver the bike, but I feel that this theory has well and truly been debunked now and low saddles are the way to go. Now, if you have a static seat post and perhaps you can't move it that low because of the length of the seat post and you need it for pedaling, it can be worth getting a second seat post and saddle, just a cheap second hand one, which you then cut down so you can run that saddle nice and low when you're in the bike park. It will help you maneuver the bike and feel a lot freer and possibly even safer on the trails. Not all knee pads are designed with the same terrain in mind, and the same can be said for lots of our protective gear. Now, if you're pedaling all day, you might want something light and maneuverable, but if I'm riding an uplift, I want something a bit more heavy duty. The same can be said of my helmet. If I'm taking a lift to the top, I'll be running a full face helmet. Now, it's a bit of a fashion faux pas to some people, but I like running elbow pads and the condition of my forearms has noticeably improved since I've started running them as, well, they used to be cut to ribbons with all kinds of horrible scars on them, but now they're getting a lot better. So ignore the fashion police kiddos, run what makes you feel safe. And there are my suggestions of how to set up your bike and yourself for riding the bike park. Now, personally, I love riding bike park stuff. I love hitting high low turns as fast as I can at least on a downhill or long travel bike. But where do you guys ride? What is your favorite bike park that you've ever been to? Get in the comments below. And as always, let me know if there are any tips or tricks that I have missed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.